wedding cake right there behind you. Oh my god, it's 12.30. Oh wow. Time it was. Just really, really feel like we uh, push the envelope. Yeah. Hot cakes. Just smelling that white gas just kind of brings back sort of fond memories. I don't know what it is. Less fat I am. Yeah. Oh. What is that? <laughs> it's a hernia. Hernia. <laughs> hmm. You noticing that bit of a strange bite flavor, like the there, like a hint of um, like seagull shit or something. No. Uh, who cares? You just burn the shirt. This hint of seagull sh found that kicking around on the beach. Looks like it's from a pretty big whale.
fuel drums are fairly common find in the north when people travel large distances by snowmobile they'll often just strap one of these entire drums to their chromatic sledge and pull it and then uh, affix a pump to the top to pump it out to refill because when you're traveling two three hundred miles by snowmobile you need to haul a lot of gas with you uh, and also for planes people bush pies will cache them sometimes um, prospecting camps will have them delivered uh, by flow plane to refuel their choppers and for heating as well um, some areas where there's no uh, wood in the arctic they need to heat with oil and so these will carry aviation fuel just straight typical unleaded gas things like that diesel even another bear they're waiting for the belugas so that is two bears today Now that I've seen the polar bears out there at sea uh, hunting belugas, I couldn't see any belugas, but as I started looking more carefully, I'm seeing, you know, water shoot up that's not breaking white caps, that's just beluga whales breathing in their blowholes. But I'm seeing for sure that there's multiple beluga whales out here right now too. So that's cool. I'm, I'm watching two polar bears and a bunch of beluga whales. Yeah. Whoa, there's the bear. Right in front of me. This guy just ducked under. Oh, dude! He just attacked a whale. So we're literally just being entertained out here on the shores of Hudson Bay by watching a bear hunt belugas. And uh, we're watching it swim around from place to place. And I just saw it pounce on one and make a big splash. It's really far out there. So it's hard to really get zoomed way in on him. But I'm almost kind of using my video camera as binos to watch the action happening. Close to shore that time. There it is. Yeah. Pretty cool, pretty good entertainment for the day. Watching polar bears hunt whales on Hudson Bay, how cool is that? Well, Jim and I are just standing here not far from our cabin and we're observing polar bears that are quite a, way, quite a ways off, but not that far really. Um, you know, but uh, they're out there hunting belugas and we did see some beluga whales. Their white backs kind of come up. It's hard to decipher between the white caps of the waves and the belugas, but sure enough, you can definitely see that super white back. And then also like their blowholes blowing like a mist in the air. 
and then we saw polar bears out there in two occasions this one's just sitting kind of on an island far away and the other one was like swimming and floating on a sandbar as the tide come in and was trying to hunt these belugas so pretty freaking cool that's five bears we've seen now a mother and two cubs yesterday and now two other uh, uh, solo bears here pretty uh, pretty wild stretch of coast here and just so many polar bears it's hard to believe really it's amazing just uh, really fortunate to be out here uh, witnessing this just like seems hard to believe but amazing
How's the coffee, Jim? Pretty weak. Do you have coffee left, Ted? I do have coffee. Maybe I should add a little more, what do you think? Yeah, add all of it. Are you gonna change your shirt for the train? Yes. But put it back on when you meet Tori. It's an interesting, interesting sleep last night. Yeah. Strange, interesting broken sleep up. patterns. Yeah. Probably what to do is drinking coffee right before bed and the what? excitement of polar bears being all over the place. What the hell was making those noises out there, though? Raven, maybe? Why don't you name your son Raven? Is that a name for a boy? I think maybe it's a girl's name. I was thinking about a seagull. How about Juniper? Isn't that somebody, some famous person's kid's name or something? I don't know. Don't push it down yet. Just mixing it around. What's the year again? Ha! <laughs> 2021. Didn't she say to be ready at 12 or earlier? Oh. So uncivilized. Am I in that shot over there? Below the day joint. Am I in that? Can you are. Look phenomenal. Well, we are having our morning coffees. We rationed the last couple of flakes of creamer for 25 days. We still had some for the last day. Quite a skill, as Jim was mentioning. Probably near the most important on the bushcraft survival list is your ability to ration creamer um, by eyeballing it, dumping it out of the corner of a Ziploc. For 25 days in advance from day one. Right. When Why? kept in two separate bags. Right. Ted had a bag and I had a bag. Ultimate survival skill. Right. It's much more important because like really, um, I I mean if we if you screw up something like that, you run out of coffee, you run out of cream, we're like people go irate and uh, the expedition can be quickly ended with a knifing. It's not Ugh. Breakfast at the cabin. Well, we leave today. Our boat shuttle is going to be here at 2 o'clock, but they requested we are ready, have everything ready by around noon. And um, just in case he's early, and uh, just so we don't leave him floating out there, we're going to have to paddle out to meet him because it's uh, too shallow for him to bring his boat and motor in here and risk damaging it on these rocks. We'll have to navigate the gauntlet of polar bears as we do this. Um, kind of funny, but, uh, but, but actually true. They're actually, we're out there swimming around yesterday, like diving under for, you know, multiple minutes at a time, hunting belugas. And I do hear the wind picking up pretty significantly. Um, hopefully that doesn't become an issue and he's not able to get us. It would really suck to like pack up, get ready and wait and then him not come because of the wind. Um, hopefully it's manageable. It's a nice day, but it seems like maybe there's a little bit higher gusts, at least right now. But um, anyway, yeah, hopefully we can make it out and everything goes smooth and uh, we have a safe journey back to Churchill. Right. What are you doing? Taking the packing up. We've uh oh, my feet are gonna be soaked.
like a telescope here and we've been able to uh, observe the bears at and belugas at huge distances we couldn't otherwise with our camera. I think one of the coolest things is not just seeing a bear, but observing their behavior in their own habitat. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like we're not just seeing bears, but watching how bears interact with their cubs, or watching how they hunt. Anyone that needs a maid, probably not a good idea to hire me. Hire Jim. He knows how to cook bannock and fish. That's about it. Okay, well, here we are on the shores of mighty Hudson's Bay. This is day 25 of our adventure, starting all the way from Melvin Lake. We started traveling up the Barrington River, portaged over the height of land into the South Seal River system, which we followed through Tadouli and Chithani Lakes into the beautiful Seal River system, and we continued following the seal all the way to Hudson Bay. And pretty much have cross an enormous stretch of northern Manitoba. All around us is tundra. Um, we're staying in uh, a small cabin after completing this canoe expedition that's been over 700 miles long. And this cabin, it was built here um, as basically a safe place to stay in an area that is has a very high population density of polar bears. Um, people use it for traditional, uh, you know, hunting and uh, of course paddling like Ted and I who've come down the Seal River. They hold up in here and wait for a boat pickup from Churchill, which is what we're doing right now. Um, we've spent a couple nights in this cabin and yesterday we just hung out here and observed uh, some of the polar bears and beluga whales in the area which is super cool and also really enjoyed just uh, watching these, this tide and the way that uh, it leaves almost a moonscape when it goes out because of the shallow water here close to shore in Hudson Bay. You can see I'm carrying a 12 gauge shotgun with me loaded with slugs, definitely recommended to bring if you're walking around or camping in this area. Uh, I've honestly lost count of how many bears we've seen, how many different bear sightings. Some might have been the same one, but uh, uh, you know, likely um, at least eight or nine bears we've seen. And we haven't just seen the bears. What's been really cool is that we've actually got the chance to observe the bears. Um, we've sat there on shore and uh, watched their activities, watched their behavior, um, watched them hunt for belugas. We've seen belugas with their, you know, their blowholes shooting out and the polar bear standing, kind of waiting for them. Even saw a polar bear lunge at a beluga whale, um, watch them stand up, sniff the air, sleep on top of rocks uh, way out in the tidal flats and uh, watch the incredible distances they can swim underwater and then come up and Ted and I spent uh, you know hours yesterday just looking for bears and watching what they do watching how they behave we watched the mother bear and how it interacted with its cubs which is super super cool so um, not just a place to see bears but a place to really observe bears and polar bears too which are just such a majestic animal and really this whole final stretch of the trip has been majestic you know, the Arctic grayling, grayling we've been catching with their shimmering iridescent colors, the seals in the rapids way inland, I didn't even know that was a thing, the ice uh, canyons on the rivers that we paddled down, the multiple kilometers long rapids, the gorges, the spans, the widths of the river. We put a lot of uh, miles behind us, keeping up our daily distance of over 32 kilometers each day in the earlier stretches of the trip, um, which was very challenging. One of the beautiful things around here is just all the birds too, all different kinds of birds have been really neat to watch and um, from the beginning to the end, but especially as we've gotten close to the coast and you know, those, uh, you know, back to back type two fun days with very little sleep, putting in 11 hour travel days, um, each soloing, which is much slower than paddling tandem to uh, paid off. And we actually ended up being a little ahead of schedule, which was what we wanted 
to be because we wanted to get to this cabin a little earlier to have some time to unwind a bit and observe bears and uh, do that in safety uh, in the safety of the cabin um, and we're really glad that we were able to do that in the end um, our boat shuttle uh, pickup should be coming in a couple hours or something like that yeah one or two hours so we've basically just packed up the cabin packed up all our gear given it a good sweep we've closed the window shutters which are studded with very very many nails uh, to keep the bears from smashing them we're going to close up the door put an entire extra piece of plywood with nails hammered through it and close the big huge latch i guess we'll call it that uh, closes the door and basically keeps the bears from breaking into it and trashing the place um, we're actually going to have to uh, portage all our gear and canoes to the river and paddle out to meet jack batstone who's a, a legendary uh, northern person from um, churchill he's the one that uh, is the guy you call if you want a boat pickup from here he knows what he's doing um, essentially uh, risking his life even to come out here this is no easy task navigating hudson bay which can be you know throw up some massive waves you have serious tidal things shallows boulders everywhere that you got to um, watch out for so he can't come in here because it's just too shallow so we're gonna have to paddle out to him probably uh, will um, paddle out to him and might even see a few beluga whales uh, later in the season the beluga show up in massive numbers I already probably saw oh geez I don't know about at least 20 um, just their blow holes and just their backs arching out of the water like that and that's why the polar bears are out there um, hunting them and Ted and I both hope that the polar bears are getting food because you know getting belugas because that's less likely of a chance that they'll decide to you know turn their attention to putting us on the uh, menu so yeah very cool area um, very uh, like crazy the amount of bears here the amount of wildlife just the the wildness of the area in general we're seeing um, you know all kinds of uh, prints from massive wolves a lot of caribou sign uh, the bears the whales the seals just everything has been incredible and there has been a lot of challenges on this expedition too and um, a lot of the time I get asked Jim why would you do that like why would you uh, break your back and travel for 12 hours a day let alone film the entire adventure that added amount of work to keep batteries charged and pull out the camera when you least want to um, is all uh, part of um, you know definitely a large uh, amount of work for sure and people say why wouldn't you do that and um, there's two different kinds of fun there's type 2 fun and there's type 1 fun type 1 fun is your typical kind of fun where you have a smile on your face and you're enjoying yourself like a typical vacation if you went to a resort or you're hanging out with friends laughing type 2 fun is fun afterwards and you're not necessarily smiling while you do it uh, and sometimes the harder that type 2 fun is the longer it takes before you sit back and reflect reflect on it and realize that that's fun and uh, basically type 2 fun is um, is a very rewarding kind of fun and it makes you happier in the long run even though you might not be happier in the moment uh, because you have accomplished something they say that people are happiest if we can accomplish just something progress just a little bit every day towards our goals in life whatever they may be and uh, when you're on a canoe expedition like this you're not just doing that you're actually living that and uh, we need challenges in our life to um, challenges that we can overcome to not just feel happy but feel fulfilled if you're just having type 1 fun all the time eventually you might feel a little bit empty you, and we need those challenges to be presented to us that um, to give us the opportunity to wrap our minds around them and figure them out build our own self-confidence and build that fulfillment which is in a way real happiness and that is what this trip does in essence and when you do that in a, a incredibly natural setting it really kind of draws you closer to your own roots and uh, your ancestors and uh, the way indigenous people traveled and survived here and you get a window into the life of animals and and um, you really feel this incredible feeling of freedom when you're completely relying on yourself for everything like you're doing when you're on a wilderness expedition and to see 
wild areas in their natural state is incredible a lot of times we forget how good the fishing is or how many animals there are or um, how remote some areas still are on this earth and uh, what it's truly like to be in those places and those places are getting smaller and smaller with every passing day so I feel extremely fortunate that I still live in a time where we have these natural environments um, that are true wilderness areas and I hope that we can actually uh, decide that some of these areas should be um, left undeveloped without road access without buildings and uh, that would be something that would be extremely um, beneficial to do for future generations so they can still enjoy areas like the seal river and the south cereal seal and northern manitoba in general and other wilderness areas in the same kind of way i have in the years to come um, which i think is very important to the entire human experience even if you even if you don't use them just to know that they're there know those ecosystems are still intact and who knows leaving an area like that intact is you know one day some people might have to rely on them again for sustenance in a way that we once did so having them there is is could even be looked at a, a beyond just a spiritual place and a place where we can uh, leave the animals unmolested it can also be uh, an insurance policy for our own survival and i think that's much more true than most people would realize um, and what a trip traveling up river, hauling up the Barrington River, um, just wading up rushing rapids, going around boulders, paddling up them when we could, navigating by compass over the height of land that, that divide, that divide the Lake Winnipeg and the Nelson River and into the Seal River watershed. So traveling from going up river to then going down river is a really interesting way to see and feel the land and get an understanding for the way the land lies and why water flows the way it does and because of that elevation is something that kind of teaches you things in a very practical way much like you can read about polar bears or hear about them but when you actually observe them doing something and observe their behavior that teaches you something about them and about their lives gives you a window into the fascination of their own abilities and their own lives in a kind of a way that a book or even a documentary never really could the world is not in your books and maps it's up there. So I feel very fortunate, very thankful for that. Um, and then of course heading across some of these massive lakes, big sand lake, absolutely massive and being having these challenges of enormous distances to paddle and being exhausted at the end of the day and knowing you're probably only going to get to sleep for four hours before you have to do it all again and then having these gusting winds these scary winds throwing at you threatening to pin you down in one spot for multiple days as your food resources dwindle not being able to travel but being able to overcome that by building a catamaran by putting our minds together and building a sail so we could travel large distances in this massive lake and these huge waves and then dealing with the extremely high water we had in the earlier days of the trip on the South Seal where you know rapids were completely flooded into the trees having to portage things we wouldn't normally have to portage and having to scout things that were very challenging wading through flooded forests and uh, a lot of the rapids being way more challenging than we thought they were going to be finally getting into the seal still dealing with the challenges of high water and the uh, extremely danger water demons of, of boils and fast eddy lines and enormous standing waves but still man managing to get through all of them without even having to portage once on the seal and uh, to finish the trip in an absolutely beautiful setting with a perfect sunset and as soon as we get to Hudson's Bay to climb out of the boat and see the mother and two cubs was a little scary but also just an amazing amazing thing to see those and then to continually observe and see polar bears and whales the next day was just incredible I mean the seal river is just like an absolute Shangri-La and uh, it feels like you're in just a, an enchanted land um, is the best way to describe it absolutely spectacular um, what a trip but it has become the challenges the physical challenges the challenges of pushing yourself the fears of bears the fear of the impending rapid the fears of the what challenges the high water did and would present in the days to come and the interpersonal challenges of being able to get along with another person like me and Ted have done out here and overcome uh, arguments that we've gotten in a few times that 
were, you know, heavily brought on by just, uh, you know, exhaustion and hunger and, and other, you know, fears of, of things we might face and disagreements and being able to get through those things and get over them, even though, um, you know, we might be enraged with each other at the time uh, are, uh, um, is another challenge and another real skill that you have to have when you're out here to be able to mentally uh, work and travel with other people uh, on top of the challenge of, of uh, the actual skill and sport of canoeing and on top of the mental um, grit the, and, and physical grit you have to have to get through. You also have to be able to um, deal with other people and all of those things. I don't know if we did amazingly well on all of them, but here we are at the end and we're both um, extremely happy and extremely proud of ourselves for our accomplishment and closer as brothers when it's all been said and done too, which I think uh, is about the best thing you could possibly ask for. What an adventure. What? I think a Wolverine knocked over our trail cam. Shut up. Yeah. My trail cam, the smudge marks right across it look like it could potentially be from the nose of an animal. The trail cam was knocked over last night. On top of that rock strapped to the frame of an old metal chair and in the morning the chair had fallen over well it hasn't been extremely windy I looked around at first and I didn't see any polar bear prints around it or anything but now as I've come to collect it I see what look like wolverine claw marks and wolverine claw marks as the animal is jumping to get up onto the rock because there's no claw marks around there so it looks because of those claw marks it would have jumped as opposed to walking around the rock. Maybe on the trail cam we have a wolverine investigating. Looks like uh, the trail cam was right up here strapped to that metal chair. And there's the print so it looked up. It jumped right up there. Jumped up onto this rock, sniffed at the trail cam till it fell over and maybe that startled it and it left. I think that means that we might have trail cam footage of a wolverine because <laughs> those are ripping hot. Like that just happened last night. Maybe not ripping fresh, but last night. See some of the older prints around here. Massive wolf print right here, about that wide. It's really cool to actually, that's quite an old print because you can see stuff that's growing in there but it's quite cool to just like actually feel the print especially in a fresh one and it almost feels like you're feeling the wolf's real paw and claws it's like super cool just to feel the print it feels like you're touching the animal let's check out the footage my trail cam yep oh you can barely see it but guaranteed wolverine So it would appear that the bears um, go further out at low tide often because you know as the tide goes out the belugas and seals too I, I think but the belugas that they're hunting would um, definitely uh, go out with the tide and that's one of the reasons why there's so many bears here is because so many belugas congregate here they've only just started 
Uh, so I imagine that sometimes you hear there'd be more bears and definitely a lot more belugas than now but uh yeah it looks like the bears go out with the tide to stay in the deeper water because the belugas need the deeper water and as the tide comes in the bears get closer and closer to the actual physical land as opposed to um, wandering the tidal flats so much uh so i i'm seeing a couple bears out there right now just kind of swimming around uh so me and Ted are, are concerned that we're going to have to paddle out to Jack Batstone's boat and like go through like a gauntlet of polar bears hunting belugas. Well, I mean, how long till Batstone even gets here? So we got our boats loaded up um, and uh, we're just wading out here as the tide slowly comes in, just slowly moving our canoes up as the tide comes in. As soon as our boat shuttle gets here, he's going to be out there close to the mouth of the river and we're going to jump him and paddle out and that's the plan. So we got everything loaded in there kind of like in a decent enough way and uh, we'll have to unload it so hopefully there's not too much chop or things can get interesting but uh, he should be here literally any minute. strokes of the trip. Well, we are off. We think we see our shuttle. Looks like he's waiting, Ted. What? Looks like he's waiting out there. Looks like a ways out. Right. Anyway, we uh, saw him come in and we are paddling out to meet up with them. It looks like the conditions are pretty favorable. We have, uh, you know, tailwind coming from shore, so less opportunity for it to build uh, going out to him. And so that's good, but it might get a little hairier out there. We will see. Well, we're gonna have to paddle a ways out here. Just because uh, the way the tides are, there's just, too many rocks, too shallow for him to safely get in here. And if you wreck a lower end in a prop when you're out here, uh, we're not getting home. So, looks like there's no polar bears swimming in front of us. So no uh, watery polar bear gauntlet to push through. Might be a few belugas out here though. Well, the tides cover up a lot of boulders and stuff and you risk damaging his uh, motor and his boat so he requested that we paddle out to him dude there's belugas right in front of him right now what? there's a bunch of belugas going past right in front of him 
Cool. Jim's just shooting a thing saying that we're gonna come meet him. A little we see you shot? Yeah, or just letting him know in case he doesn't see us. Right. He probably has a telescope or something. Yeah. Yeah, I heard it. Here he comes. He sees us. There's a whale! You see that? I see one underwater right here! You can see belugas right in front of us as we paddle out here. to do pull along this side okay a lot of belugas out here eh Jack Fatstone I presume how are ya yeah no 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 there's only two yeah It, uh, it's kind of been on and off. Like it, it, there was a bit of a wind and then we're like, oh, I don't, I'm not so sure. And then it was like, then it tailed off and then it started picking up just shortly before you got here. with whatever you need you know you got a couple of deck hands now yeah, so let's, let's get this on the road and we'll put this on top oh it's a lot more stable in here <laughs> let's pull this way pull this way. you want me to just pull it up the up the front and over the back okay let me just let's let's pull this over now over that <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah yeah i'm trying not to let it <sighs> So you guys never paddled like down to your factory, eh? No. no. That's a good trip. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah there's a lot of people doing it, eh? Yeah. yeah. That's the uh, the That's Nelson the route, eh? Pardon? Is that the Nelson or? No, no. Hey.
Hey Ted, look. That's a good. That's a good one there. There we go. Maybe one. Fuck you guys should just get up at about 5 o'clock tomorrow morning and jump in your canoes and paddle out. You think our wives would like this at all, Ted? We can't tell them about this. <laughs> we can't tell them about this or they're never going to let us go again. Gotta pay you too, eh? <laughs> of course. <laughs> Well, here we are in Churchill, Manitoba after a awesome boat ride where we saw many beluga whales. Um, and that is the polar bear alarm here in Churchill, Manitoba. I think it's a polar bear alarm anyways. What's that? Well, after that, the alarm got the dogs howling and we're stayed just outside of town in Another one of Jack Batstone's cabins he put us up in after the epic ride out. Like I said, tons of beluga whales, got up close to a few of them. And uh, it was quite the adventure out on the bay because uh, closer to the shore, there's all kinds of um, uh, shoals and stuff like that. So we actually had to drive six miles out into the middle of Hudson Bay before taking another waypoint and uh, coming back to Churchill. And uh, Churchill, there's a train in here. It was used to transport grain out of the prairies. So you can see the large grain elevators there in the distance. And uh, we're just enjoying this uh, gorgeous uh, sunset here. Another beautiful day. Bugs are coming out a bit. Got a few mosquitoes. Ted and I got a bite to eat in town and uh, just chilled on the beach, watched some uh, people set fish nets to feed their dog teams, which was pretty cool. So already met a few of the locals and enjoying ourselves. We're gonna be here until seven when we have to head over to the train station and load our canoes on the train for an 18 hour train ride back to Thompson. So really, really cool uh, community here. Uh, very remote community, train access or air access only and a neat place to sort of hang out for a few days while we're waiting for our train for sure and some interesting people. So um, definitely a neat part of these trips is uh, spending some time in these communities because there's some awesome characters who've Many of them have lived closer to the land for a long time and they really know the bush, they really know the land, they know the sea, and uh, there's a lot that can be learned here too. So spent a bit of time listening to Jack Batstone who gave us the boat shuttle and uh, hearing some of his awesome stories and sharing some of ours too. So awesome way to end the trip for sure. They trot the bears. They put them in. Blue's 
guy sled in bed, you said? Uh, yeah, we were about to cure the town. Hey, that one looks like Buck. made it to Thompson, Manitoba. And there he is. Jim picked up our um, our uh, Mitsubishi Delica that we grabbed from Wright Drive and took a cab over to where we left it at Wings Over Kissing. And uh, we are going to start loading it up and begin the long drive home. Long train ride through the night from Churchill. Um, you know, the train is called the Muskeg Express, they've named it because it goes through a lot of muskeg, which means it goes through a lot of permafrost, uh, so it's a little wonky, so they gotta go really slow and carefully through some sections, you know, but uh, yeah, safe train ride, it was really nice and uh, kind of cool as well, just all through the wilderness. It was a great experience and uh, fingers crossed we have a safe drive home.